When I decided to put out a poll for today's episode so subscribers could decide what I was drawing and writing some lore for, I was like, is it even worth putting out a poll? I know they're gonna pick Ben 10 aliens as kaijus. Ben 10 and monsters are two of the most popular topics on this channel. But I put out the poll anyway, and exactly as expected, that dominated all the other choices. I am still excited to do some of the other things on that list, so don't worry if you voted for the other stuff, a bunch of those are still gonna happen. But for now, I am super excited to get into Ben 10 Aliens as some giant monsters. Let's go. Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Three years ago, my world was attacked by its first monster, kaiju, titan, or whatever you want to call these things. Japan kept a lot of the information quiet to the rest of the world, but rumor has it the first monsters were actually man-made. Whether that was an accident or not, we don't know. Not that it matters how this all started. After the first ones rose, it was like a beacon to the cosmos that Earth wanted more monsters. And the universe unfortunately provided. More and more massive creatures started popping up, some coming through portals, some being created, and some coming from space. The first ones I've researched all apparently came from space. Here's what I've got on each of them. First one up is one of the ugliest looking beasties we've got on Earth. Some scientists I spoke to referred to it as Leboan Gigantus or something, but that sounded kind of lame to me, so I renamed it the Blitz Beast. In its regular mode, it's normal-ish looking, by monster standards anyway, kind of just like a big werewolf with some green spikes. But when this thing uses its main form of attack, that's when it becomes one of the ugliest beasties we've got. It's got a four-hinged jaw that can flower open for it to shoot a sonic cannon that can level a kilometer's worth of buildings in whatever direction it shoots it. Worse still, it can use that as a sort of shield, blocking any incoming projectiles. It's also got strength and durability and all that, but what else is new? Most of these monsters have that. Though it is a lot faster than most. Funny enough, this thing's one weakness is actually sound. Why does a thing that's weak to sound shoot sound blasts? I don't know, I guess evolution is dumber on whatever planet this thing is from. But so far, the best way to ward it off is with your own sonic cannon. But if I ever want to kill this thing, I'll probably need something to keep the beastie's big roast mouth shut too. Now I know with Wolf Blitzer or Ben Wolf or whatever you want to call it, he usually opens his mouth four-pronged when he's shooting the sound cannons, and I only drew his jaw opening, like the, like the bottom jaw splitting, but I hope people don't mind that because this is honestly one of my favorite monster mouths I've ever drawn. I really like the look. I did initially think of having it open four ways, but I just thought it was going to look cooler this way. I thought his eyes were going to kind of get blocked if I had it opening four ways. And I did see a couple images of the original character's mouth opening just two-pronged. So I hope people don't mind that. The rest of the drawing I like as well. You know, it's, it's fine. It's pretty normal, monstery looking kind of stuff out of me. I like how I did the fur on its back, but the main thing I really like is just how I did the mouth and jaw. I think it's really happy with this one. I might eventually need to work out some new background ideas for my kaiju kind of monster videos because I don't have time to render out a bunch of buildings so I just kind of throw in buildings the same sort of way I do rocks and mountains and trees and stuff. But that doesn't really work as well. I'll probably think of something else for future kaiju monster videos but for this one I'm just gonna stick with this kind of thing. So I hope y'all like the finished result of our Ben Wolf as a Kaiju. Here it is. Next up is another creature that technically has some sciencey name like the Piscus something or other, but I call it the Tidal Jaw. Seemed like an obvious name to me. The thing's most powerful weapon is its jaw. While it's pretty tough in every other way imaginable, its bite is recorded so far as being able to chomp through literally anything. When monsters first started invading Japan, they built some crazy big robots to fight them, and that was sort of working for them, and they were getting a lot of attention worldwide for it. So the United States got kind of jealous and built some even bigger robots. That was working for them too, until this thing swam up from the ocean. Their best bot had a titanium armor, and this thing bit it in half in one go. I've watched the video like 50 times, it was nuts. Anyway, their government-built mechs weren't doing much, but this one aspiring tech mogul guy had built a mechanical dragon to fight monsters himself. I really dig that guy's style. 
Anyway, this thing had a flamethrower in it, and that was the first weapon to actually do some serious damage to this creature. It seemed to dry it out enough that it had to return to the ocean. When it's in the water, we've got no clue if it has any weaknesses, but maybe if it can be lured inland enough and then scorched with some crazy fire, that could be enough to kill it. Or maybe here in Australia we could lure it into the desert and trap it there. Maybe that would be enough? Either way, it's not going to be easy, but it's certainly doable. Now I think I've talked before a few times about how Rip Jaws is probably my favorite Ben 10 alien to draw, and I just had so much fun with this one. The Rip Jaws dragon that I've drawn is one of my favorite dragons in my, you know, turning things into dragons episodes, and this is probably my favorite kaiju I've drawn, although that's, you know, there's not a ton of competition because I haven't drawn that many of them. Partway through, I realized I wasn't making his hands webbed, and I was like, is that a problem? Do I want to add that in? And I don't end up adding it in. I don't know if it really matters that much. It might have been an interesting element to add some more green to his hands or something. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how everything else came together. And his face ended up looking a little bit like the Kraken from the 2010 Clash of the Titans movie. That was unintentional, but you know, kind of works. They're both sea monster kind of creatures. Also, you may have noticed that I'm trying to subtly develop a character for these narrations the way that I kind of did with Tehran in my Dragon episodes. I'm seeing this as kind of like a loose reboot of one of my old Multiverse Tales books, so I'm picturing the main character from that being the narrator of these. But like with Tehran in the Dragon videos, I'm gonna like slowly casually develop that over a few videos if I do more Kaiju Monster videos like this. Although before I'm introducing more characters, I should really draw Tehran and do a story for Astra, but I've got plans for both of those. Anyway, let's take a look at the finished version of this drawing. As usual, if any of you lovely people want any of the drawings in this episode as posters, you can get those on my Teespring store. You can access that from a little bar underneath this video or in the pinned comment of this video. I'll put links to all four of the posters from this episode. And I got tons of other monster and creature and superhero kinds of posters up on there, so take a look around. There's some cool stuff. But for now, back into the next two designs. Let's go. Next up, we got one that nobody ever sees coming, but you can always smell it coming. The sky stench is the nightmare of anyone afraid of bugs. It's like a gigantic green hornet with four eyes and a stinger the length of a bus. But the grossest thing about this big boy is the sticky, flammable mucus that it shoots from its eyes. Yeah, it's eyes, not even its mouth. It's not fun to watch. This thing hit Dublin a couple years back and they just gave up on trying to get rid of the hardened clumps of gross green stuff that thing shot. When the mucus hardens, it might as well be adamantium. I know that's a fictional metal, but whatever, you get what I mean. The one way to get rid of this stuff is to light it on fire, but it's so explosive that if they tried that, they'd basically just be nuking the city. Now, this thing being a big, gross bug, it has a pretty intense exoskeleton. Bullets, missiles, and all that have been pretty ineffective on its body, but its wings are not so tough. The way the Irish army finally got the thing away was by riddling its wings with rockets. It crashed down into the ocean and then had a pretty hard time getting out of the water. It did manage to eventually get airborne again and flee, but the point is that this thing doesn't like water and the one way to take it down seems to be to go for its wings. Maybe once it's grounded it can be hurt more easily. Now you may have noticed with this drawing and with some of the other ones I've done so far that I am taking inspiration from existing giant monsters and kaijus and titans and stuff. With the first drawing I was taking some inspiration from the wolf in Rampage, with the next one I was inadvertently taking inspiration from the kraken, and with this one I was also referencing images of Mothra, because you know, big bug monster kaiju thing. This drawing, as well as the next one, more so than the first two, I think, kinda just look like bigger, scarier versions of the actual existing designs. I added some fur on the shoulders, because Mothra had a bit of hairy parts that I thought looked kind of interesting. I changed around the shapes of the wings a little bit, and I didn't give him hands, I just gave him, like, you know, bigger mantis kind of pincery sort of things. Not pincers, whatever. You can see what it is. I was also referencing a few other designs of Stinkfly from later series, but the main one I was drawing from for this is the one from the original series. Also, for the voiceover of this character, I was trying to make my voice a little bit deeper, and now I feel like I'm bringing that into the design notes part. That's unintentional. But anyway, whatever. Let's take a look at the finished version of our Stinkfly Kaiju. Now 
Now the last one for today is big, which may not sound like anything because all these creatures are big, but this one can get really big. At its resting height, it's about 400 feet tall, but when it first crashed down near Cape Town, it was only around 60 feet. That's obviously still big, but not nearly as big as some of the other beasties we've seen. So the South African military attacked this thing, thinking they could make quick work of it. But after they first struck, it suddenly evolved and grew. Armored plates and spikes formed on it, and it grew to nearly double its size. The fight went on and on, and this thing smashed through everything they threw at it. But the more forces they sent in, the bigger this thing got. Because of its ability to evolve its size, I took to calling this thing Shin Humongous, and it's probably the beast I'll have the hardest time fighting of the ones we've talked about today. It doesn't seem to have any obvious weaknesses. It's slow, which I could use to my advantage, but with every attack it seems to get more and more durable. Plus, the spiked mace on its tail can cause some crazy earthquakes when it smashes it against the ground, so probably best to attack it from the air. My best guess is because of this thing's size and density, it wouldn't be able to swim, so maybe if I could lure it into the ocean, it would just sink and drown. But like every other plan of attack I've given today, that's also easier said than done. But luckily, I'm always up for a challenge. Now one thing I only noticed after I'd done all the drawings for this, I actually drew this one first, and I drew the Rip Jaws one last, and I noticed after the fact that I gave those two, like, the exact same proportions, like the giant long arms and the tiny legs, and I probably should have varied that up more, I didn't notice until after I'd already done it. So it's the kind of thing where I'm like, I really love how both of these turned out, but it gives the episode a little bit less variety by doing two very similarly proportioned characters. Ignoring that, though, I'm really happy with how this one came out. I probably should have made him a bit bigger in relation to the really cheaply done buildings that I always throw in the backgrounds of these drawings. But, you know, because he's a character that can scale in size, I can say this is just a drawing of him when he's at one of his smaller sizes. I also add a few details in after the fact that make him look a little bit like Wild Mutt, because I add some, like, black stripes to him just to throw in a bit more detail. So if I ever end up doing a Wild Mutt Kaiju, then I'll probably need to vary that one up a bunch more. Maybe lean into the wolf kind of parts of it a bit more or something, I don't know, we'll see. And the only reason I didn't do Wild Mutt in this episode is because I did him in my last Ben 10 focused episode, where I was putting Ben 10 aliens on famous superhero teams and turning them into human superheroes. Really love drawing Wild Mutt as well. Definitely would make a cool Kaiju. But anyway, let's wrap up this episode and take a look at how the Humongosaur Kaiju turned out. Alright, alright, this takes over as my new favorite episode recently from the Disney Princesses as Marvel and DC Villains episode. I really like how all of these turned out. I love when that happens in an episode where I really like all four drawings. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, I got tons of other Ben 10 episodes and monster episodes. The Ben 10 Aliens as Dragons episode is probably a good one to jump to after this, but I've also turned them into D&D monsters and superheroes and supervillains. And then I got playlists full of turning stuff into dragons and into beasts and monsters in general. Go poking around and I'll link a playlist at the end of this video. But that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcraft Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching everybody and thanks to everyone who voted for this episode and I'll see you all in the next one on Friday. Goodbye.